Mark chapter 11. I've quoted this one a million times if you've been here. Mark 11. I could quote it to you by heart, but I'm actually going to read it this morning. Mark 11, starting in verse 22. And Jesus answering, saying unto them, Just do your best. <laughs> Just follow your heart. <laughs> do what Grandpa did. <laughs> Throw in an extra tithe, and you know you've been extra bad. <laughs> They don't say that. It's nowhere in the Bible. No. Anybody who says that to you, you just run away. Right. Come on, are you? What's it say? Have faith in God. Come on, say it with me again. Have faith in God. Yeah, have faith in God. The God that was with me with the lion, the God that was with me with the bear, the God that helped me with the last giant, the God that said he would hear me when I pray, I'm going to have faith in God. Amen. Amen. He said, For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, oh man, we got another giant in the room. Can't see past it, can't get around it. It's not moving. It's immovable. It's in my way. It's halting me. What am I going to do? Lay down here and die? No. Start building my house? Or am I going to decide to take authority that God has put in me and pray and speak to this mountain? Now that takes faith, don't it? I mean, it's a mountain. It's immovable. It's physically impossible. It's irrational. It's illogical. It shouldn't happen. Come on. The doctor said this. They said that. It doesn't. It can't happen that way. They've never changed in 20 years, Pastor. They're not going to change now. Well, have you talked to God about it? Have you spoke to your mountain? You can't change their will, but you can sure make them want to move. Now, did he say get your pastor to speak to your mouth? No. Did he say get the televangelist to speak to your mouth? No. Oh. Did he say to get your prayer partner to speak to your mouth? No. He said you say. If you've got to confess to be saved, then what you say matters. And when you pray, you expect things to happen. Come on. So when you say this mountain, be thou removed, be cast into the sea, and shut not doubt in his, in his heart. Now listen, if it wasn't possible for you to doubt, if you were so super Christian that you were never going to doubt, why in the world would God be Jesus, red letters, be talking to you so plainly about that? Because he knows human nature. He knows what the enemy's going to tempt you with. And he knows that he's going to try to get you to doubt it as soon as it comes out of your mouth. So he's encouraging you. Now don't doubt. You know, Peter, when he stood at, when Jesus, when Jesus said, come, he kept his eyes on the Lord. And after his prayer request was answered, he took his eyes off the Lord and started looking at all around him and started sinking like a rock. Just because you think you get an answer doesn't mean you gotta take you can't take your eyes off the Lord. Just because you said it and started moving doesn't mean you can take your eyes off the Lord. Because then that's when doubt comes in. I'm sure he was like, how is this possible? How am I walking on water? Well, this doesn't make any sense. That was a fish. <laughs> What's going on? And all of a sudden, he started sinking. And the more he started sinking, the more he started doubting. Until reach, Jesus reached out and picked him up, set him back on top of that. He said, I ain't moving. I'm with you until I get there. It's a way, a way out from the shore, man. <laughs> Come on. 
but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. Now it's easy for me to get you to repeat something in here today and if there's anointing in the room and I could tell you, speak to your mountain, you'd go, mountain, move! And you'd believe it every second. You'd walk out the door and you'd go, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe kind of sort of. I mean, no, you got to believe what you're speaking. That's one of the first cues of praying. You got to believe what you're speaking. And it's got to line up with the Word of God. And you have to speak it. Well, God knows what I'm thinking in my heart. I don't need to pray out loud. Uh, I, I, everywhere He said pray, He said speak, He said say something. Come on. So that he shall have whatsoever he thinketh. Yeah. That's what it says? Yeah. Say it. You got to say something. Come on. Therefore, say to you whatsoever things you desire when you pray. Well, how do you know when you say these things were praying? Well, because it says it right there. We're talking about praying still. Come on. When you pray, when you're saying something, believe that you receive them and God may eventually do them. Is that what it says? But ain't that what most people's believing? He says, and he shall have them. Some of you have not slain your first lion yet. You're going to have to get her slain. Because when you slay that lion, it's going to help you with the bear. And when you slay that bear, it's going to help you with the giant. And when you get your first giant under your belt, it's going to help you with the next giant. So that when you pray, you expect something to happen. I don't mean this arrogantly, and I'm not trying to make any of myself. I still remember the first tornado I spoke to, and it it altered course. I, I remember the second one I spoke to and it dissipated. I remember the third one. I've lost count now, probably upwards to a hundred. No exaggeration about it. When the walls start shaking, we like live in Tornado Alley where we live at now. But matter of fact, they just took a roof off the barn down through there, did some stuff. But you know, when it gets that way, the kids start looking to dad. They're like, when are you going to speak? You need to speak to the wife, Pastor Tammy. She's like, what are you going to speak to this storm? Are you not listening? It's getting serious out there, you know. And to be honest, I wait until I feel something in my spirit. And when I feel it, then I speak to it. The anointing hits and I go back doing what I'm doing. Somebody says, aren't you worried that that thing's going to happen? Aren't you up checking it? No, if I believe what I spoke, I don't need to go check to see if it's happening and what kind of shape it's in. It's done. That's how faith works. Well, aren't you worried? What if something happened? You didn't send your kids down there. Well, yeah. If I didn't believe what I was speaking, we should have been in the shelter, in the basement way before that. And we probably should change locations if I didn't believe what I was speaking. But one day the devil, devil could, yeah, the one day the devil could, but I'm going to pray and believe what I'm speaking regardless of what he does. <laughs> Y'all still with me? Here's the next thing about praying. Dropping these words. And when you stand praying, do what you say. Oh, come on. Everybody loves that word. Forgive. Forgive. If you don't forgive, you might as well blot out everything you're saying. Your lips are moving and it's going nah, 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 blah 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 blah. And the Lord's going, I can't hear you. Right. <laughs> I didn't write it. Don't shoot the messenger. I'm just telling you. If you want your prayer request heard, you have to forgive. Forgive. 
If you have all against any that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. If you got all against somebody else, you should go to them, take care of it, do the best you can to make it, tell them why you feel that way, and then forgive them. What if they don't change? They haven't changed. They're the same way. They never told me sorry. Well, let it go. Let them quit taking free rent up in your head. Amen. Amen. Forgive them, release it, and let God deal with them. My goodness. Amen. Do you want God to hold everything you've done wrong against you? Because no. that's what's going to happen if you don't forgive them. That is not a good equal thing. You know <laughs> what you're doing for them, and what God can hold against you. Oh my goodness! Yeah. All right. On to the next one. Y'all still here? Yes. Okay. Revelation five eight. Revelation five eight. I'm not even on to the other stuff yet. Oh, Lord. I'm doing good, though. i got like 20 minutes left. Can y'all believe that? Some of you are like, is he going to go forever? You're not even standing up today. <laughs> and when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb. Who's the Lamb? Jesus. Jesus. Can I? I'm having to really project. Could you? Having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. I'm not going to do a deep dive teaching on this today. It'll make your brain go whoop for a little bit. But that just, we're just validating that there's vials around the throne room. That your prayers are in, and they become an odor to God, a sweet smelling odor that the angels come and they bring. And He says, Man, I need to take care of that. Mm -hmm. Now, you don't command angels, don't let buy into all that hypocrisy that people have done, but your prayers can cause God to activate angels on your behalf mm -hmm. to go and do something. Mm -hmm. Come on. How the Bible talks about ministering angels. He talks about saving them. How God sends them. So, I'm going to go ahead and read the next one because I, I like it. And they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals therefore. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. So there, this is where God's talking. He's about ready to open up for tribulation. But there are golden vials full of the prayers of the saints that are sitting around the throne. Prayer is vital to God. I kind of think of it, now this is just a thought, don't take me there and don't take me to the woodshed, this is just a thought, okay? But for me, my prayer is feeling like I'm filling the fuel gauge up of my ministering angels to move upon my house at on my behalf but don't take that out of context because if you're not praying the word everything happens because it's based on the word praying the word and then seed time harvest that's biblical but i do believe you know and on prayer i don't have time to go into all this today i've taught on this a lot throughout the years but on one hand i believe if you believe it you only need to speak it one time that's how faith works. That's what we just read. But then another time the Bible talks about making your petitions known. So how do you know which one is it? Do I speak one time and be done? Or do I make my petitions known? For the most part, I pretty much get it for me anymore where I'm at. I know when I prayed and God's heard it by faith, and I don't touch it again when it's done. And most things I pray are that way. But then there are certain times that the enemy is being persistent. I'll name one. Little Hunter was in the hospital. They didn't give him a very good uh, chance of making it. They kept pretty much writing him off. And I prayed in faith and I felt God do something. And then the devil would show right back up and do something else. He, he had an assignment to kill that young man. 
And so I became very persistent. Didn't eat, didn't sleep pretty much, and prayed until I knew that he was home free. And then the doctors, I, don't, I may get the story wrong, it's been a while now, but pretty much called and he came out of it either way about that time, got confirmation. And I was able to finally go and eat something and drink something and then his dad tried to kill me in the elevator. And that's story. <laughs> I will tell that story to prayer guard later. And I put a stone in the thing. <laughs> He's right here. Brother Darren, we won't forget you. Brother. You know, before I get the other, like, I picked this up and instantly, most of you don't know this, uh, you know, I was, a, I was a pastor and I quit and I've had spirit riders for 25 years and I, I was traveling to the different chapters every week. I was preaching at a different church every week. But there were still people coming to my house every Friday night for a Bible study before I would leave for the weekend to go minister. And uh, these people kept showing up and getting saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. And I kept trying to lock them into pastors, send them to churches, and they wouldn't leave. They kept coming. And this guy, Darren Gleason, hated preachers. Nobody told me this when they brought him to my house. Other than Heather had me praying for him about six months before that. She was taking an evangelism class I was teaching. And, she asked about her brother-in-law, so he was on my prayer list, but I didn't know who the guy was. And they didn't tell me how much he hated preachers, and so they brought him. And uh, I, kind of like I'm doing right now, honestly, I was sitting in a chair because I didn't want to get up and preach and, and, and stuff because I was trying to keep it low-key, and I was not trying to start a church or start anything. I was just trying to help people. Well, long story short, Darren was probably all the way where Brother Butch is at. And we're in a huge, I haven't had a huge living room. And I give the altar call to get saved and that. And uh, Brother Darren, he's taller than I was, about the same size, jumps up and comes at me in a dead run. And so I stand up and I don't know whether to get ready to fight or fight. <laughs> or pray and he stops about this far from my face and I'll never forget and as still as I think about it he said whatever you've got I want he didn't know what he was asking he didn't, he didn't have any church he didn't have no understanding of those things I said you want to get saved he said yes I said you want the Holy Ghost he said I want it all whatever you got I want it. So I led him in the prayer. He gave his heart to the Lord and I laid my hand on him. And I'm, you, I wish we had it on video because it's one of those things you had to see to believe it. Literally, he's from here, right? I laid hands on him. This big old boy flew off his feet all the way back to where he was at midair. His feet didn't touch the ground. He hit the couch, slid down, started talking in the Holy Ghost and just went out for about 45 minutes. I don't remember how long. Woke back up, and the first thing out of his mouth, he's all smiling. He goes, I feel drunk. Is that okay? Ain't that bad? I said, no. That's the Holy Ghost, man. That's the new wine. He said, that's pretty good stuff. <laughs> see, when you just give him the truth, so when I see that, I think of all the things that God did. Do you see where I'm going with this? Which means that we can pray that way. How many know Brother Darren should be the last one that we see that gets filled and saved that way? How many know there's a whole world out there Amen. that needs it? Amen? So, speaking of which, you can now go to Hebrews 12.1. Hebrews 12.1. I don't know if I'm going to get to everything today. How many is getting something out of this? Amen. Hebrews 12, 1. Wherefore, seeing we are also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Now, in case you didn't know, 
we have some witnesses up there. There's no tears in heaven, but I do believe people that's went on before us when great things happen, they get to see and cheer us on. I mean, you know, Paul's up there going, listen, get it right, let's go. Let's save some souls. Team sheep. <laughs> Let us lay aside every weight and sin. Listen, if it wasn't possible to get weights, if it wasn't possible to get sin, he wouldn't be telling you to lay it aside. Every human being here is going to have it. You're going to deal with it. You've got to learn to be quicker to just laying it aside. That's the point. All right? Let us lay aside every weight and sin which oh, only, only affects those weak needed ones. Is that what it says? No. But that's how the devil makes you feel, ain't it? Mm -hmm. Which he so easily besets us. <laughs> if you let your guard down, he's like a roaring lion. He will load you up with all kinds of junk in a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. You have to be diligent. Keep your heart right. Keep the doorways closed and open the wrong stuff and open the right. Alright. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us uh, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. So there is a great cloud of witnesses that are sitting up there. I believe these guys are up there cheering us on. Y'all ready? You getting anything? Yeah. Yeah. All right, now I can start preaching. I only got 10 minutes. <laughs> no, moving fast, changing devices. Come on. Somebody borrowed my Bible. So, how many believe you're a friend of God? You were just open three seconds ago. Okay. I don't guess we're supposed to look at that. Well, praise God. None of my notes are opening. I guess that just means. There we go. Times that God tells us to pray. I'm going to go fast. I'm just going to read these to you so I can wrap it up, but I'm going to give you some scriptures. How many know God tells you to pray in faith? We established that, correct? James 5.13 says, Is anyone among you suffering? He should pray. Anybody here suffering? He should pray. Is anyone cheerful? He should sing praises. Is anyone among you sick? He should call for the elder church. And they should pray. I mean, oh, if, you're, if you're suffering, he says you pray. But there's other times when things are persistent. He says call for the elders of the church. That's me. Call up here. We'll lay hands on you. We'll pray the prayer of faith. And does it say that he might heal you? Yeah. Says he will heal you. But how many know you have to have faith. faith? I can tell when people are drawing off me and when they're not for the record, when people are receiving and when they're just kind of... I mean, when faith isn't a spectator sport. I'm not trying to beat you up. I'm trying to educate you. Come on. And not to go and pray over them the elder church, and they should pray over them, having anointed them with olive oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick person. The Lord will restore him to health. If he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. There's that forgiven thing. And so, does it say it could save them? No. Well, but you have to do what? Have faith. And pray. pray. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. Should you go, we're not Catholics, and should you go around telling every Tom, Dick, and Harry your sins? No. You should not. That's 
Where did he tell you to go when you're doing this? Jesus. Jesus. Or to Jesus, but he did also say go to your elders. There's certain things that you probably need to go talk to them about because if you're dealing with them, they're probably going to have some wisdom to help you shut that door. And if they're real men and women of God, it's not going any further. I'm not talking about the Catholic kind of thing where you, you confess your sins and it's wiped out. I'm talking about going to them, getting some wisdom so that maybe you uh, can close that door of sin that you're dealing with and they give you some scripture to stand on. Do you see what I'm saying? I could give you much more on that, but we're talking about praying this morning. Y'all hear? But the first person you go to is Jesus. He's afraid to stick closer to the brother. I'm not trying to replace that. I'm just trying to educate y'all on that verse. You with me? Mm -hmm. All right. So the urgent request of a righteous person is very powerful in its effect. Uh, uh, James 5, 17, Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, yet he prayed earnestly that it would not rain. And for three years and six months, it did not rain on the land. Okay, so he was a man just like us and did what? Pray. Do you realize the power of anointing you have when you pray? No reason why, it's no wonder why the enemy's working overtime to get you to walk in that. Because when you start walking in the authority you have, he gets worried. Then he prayed again, and the sky gave rain, and land produced its fruit. It's funny, brother. Brother Don was busting me out this morning and didn't even know it. He was talking about all the rain we've had, and it's the wettest spring we've had. And I said, "Well, I admit that's my fault." And people were I thinking, "What do you mean? You're one guy." Well, if y'all don't know, I was having to haul a tremendous amount of water to fill my well, and it went on for quite some time. And before when I prayed, everybody complained heavily because all the rain we were getting, and I kind of backed off. No, kind of, I backed off. And then we got in a drought, and I had to haul it again. So those that are wondering, I shook heaven, and we've had rain tremendously, and I'm not planning to back off for a while. Well, I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> but if somebody can mow my grass, <laughs> can't keep up. My brothers, if any among you strays from the truth and someone turns him back, let him know whoever turns his sinner from the error of his ways and will save his life from death and cover a multitude of sins. It, then, so he said, listen, when people are going to go astray, just try to turn them back the way they're supposed to be going. That's what you're supposed to do. Keep moving. I'm moving ahead. Therefore, confess your sin to one another and pray for one another. He didn't say talk about it. He didn't say gossip about it. He didn't say tell Jim Bob about it. It's not, you know, most prayer lines have turned into gossip lines. It's why we don't have an official prayer line. Because most people just want to know the juice, not the prayer. Now we do pray around here and we do pass prayer requests, but I'm also very careful how I give them. All right? So pray for one another so that you may be healed. The urgent request of a righteous person is very powerful in its effect. So it's very powerful. Your prayer is powerful, right? Uh, the word pray in the Hebrew and the Greek means to uh, speak out utterly aloud and to make a vow or extend the uh, a wish to God. Lord, I'm petitioning you. Got a request. Uh, lines up with the word. I'm making it known to you. That's all you got to do. That's prayer. You still here? Amen. Yeah. Another one means, another part of that, a deeper means to produce an effect by speaking things. The power of miracles, all of these things came into effect because first someone prayed. So every miracle starts with a prayer. 
when Peter and John said, Silver and gold have I none, what I have I give unto you. They made a petition unto God right then. It wasn't a flowery prayer message, but it was a prayer. Y'all still with me? All right. 1208. I won't finish all that one. Everybody said, Amen. Glory. It's uh, really fighting me here, so. Real fast. How many realize prayer is just a conversation with God? I'm going to wrap this up and give you a lot of scripture on it. So, it means beseeching the Lord. Beseeching the Lord. Exodus 32.11, Exodus 32.11, pouring out the soul before the Lord. That's what it means to pray, pouring out the soul before the Lord. 1 Samuel 1 15, they were crying, praying and crying to heaven. How I many know when you need something, you, 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 you shake heaven? Mm -hmm. Lord, I wish you would do something about them. Yeah, well, I wish you would do something about your heart so I could. <laughs> But when you're praying and crying to the Lord, you've done all that you can do. Lord, you've got to do something. 2 Chronicles 32, 20. 2 Chronicles 32, 20. Seeking unto God and making supplication. That's prayer. Seeking God and making supplication. All these things are prayer. Job 8, 5. Job 8, 5. Job 8, 5. Drawing near to God. I mean, oh, God never goes anywhere. My prayer is this prayer garden is a place where you can draw near to God. If you just want to show up, sit on the bench. How I many know sometimes it's just about disconnecting from the world around you so that you get your mind where it needs to be? Psalm 73 28, bowing the knees, bowing the knees, which is also another way of humbling yourself we don't have room for old time altars but these pews and this platform make a decent old altar where you can come bow your knees and just pray and talk to God if you've ever seen me in service you've been here very long you've seen me get down on my knees turn around talk to God bow myself pray because I'm interceding for for the for for you all that God will move in a way that will minister to you. Hebrews ten twenty two, Hebrews ten twenty two, the notes I have here with it. I'm not going to read it. Acceptable prayer must be sincere. Sincere, offered with reverence and godly fear with a humble sense of our own insignificance. So, must be sincere, reverence, and godly fear, and humbly submitted. Prayer must also be offered in faith. I got a bunch of scriptures here if you want to write them down. I didn't have time to print them off this morning. Matthew 7, 7, Matthew 7, 8, Matthew 20. I can just give you a copy after Matthew 21, 22, Mark 11, 24, John 14, 13, John 14, 14. That must be prayed in the name of Jesus. How I many know it's, a name, it's not the name of Tom, Dick, and Harry? Right. <laughs> You'd be shocked sometimes. People praying to Mary, praying to, you know, St. Paul. It's Jesus' name. Uh, John, that's John 16, 23, John 16, 24, John 15, 16. Ephesians 2.18, Ephesians 5.20, Colossians 3.17, and 1 Peter 2.5. I know I'm going too fast for you to write them down. I'm just showing you this. I'm not taking this off the top of my head. Matthew 21.13, he said to them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer. 
that you have made it a den of thieves. How many know he wants it to be a house of prayer? Yes. 